Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Frosty Forest of Squirrel Clan, where we are going to be taking a break from the sunny seas of Salt Clan and our sea shanty singing cats, and stepping back into the absolute mess of drama that we have left Squirrel Clan mired in. Ah. <sighs> My friends, as we settle in, as our Star Clan Starry Pelt Cats, watching over the drama that will unfold today, much of which is impossible to predict because, oh, how I ever love random generators, I have to say a deep thank you, because it has been so much fun to bring to life not only Squirrel Clan and its adventures, but seeing how many people have immediately fallen in love with Salt Clan, how much fun it has been to already have some crossover capability with our wonderful Tangle Spring turning out to have a former friend with Sea Wish of Salt Clan. Those two elderly cats really getting along and exchanging, quite secretly, some of those two leg trinkets that Tangle Spring always loved. It's just been so much fun seeing which cats you guys fall in love with, reading through your comments, seeing how everyone seems to have a different favor and is rooting on and cheering for different cats. And I love it. So, thank you guys so much for that, and thank you for your patience as we return to Squirrel Clan. Squirrel Clan may seem like a bit of a mess right now, friends, but that's simply because they suffer from the fact that they were the first clan we started. And also, they had the unfortunate, unfortunate incident of being the clan that I decided to start creating all of our random generators for, which meant that, yes, yes, we did manage to get ourselves quite tangled up in all of the plots and potential plot holes for a little bit there, but you know what? Why don't we just go ahead and take it one step at a time and continue on with whatever drama the clan wants to give us today and not worry too much about the details. So let's settle in and get comfy as we stare across the snows of another leaf bear month here in the forest of Squirrel Clan, where I believe it is actually Moon 11. And we have a little bit of a situation going on, because last time, not only did we manage to go ahead and snag ourselves a brand new kit with the arrival of Pebble Kit, who has formerly become Chestnut Star's adopted daughter, but we also welcomed in a completely unexpected cat with Robin Fern. <laughs> I... I'm so excited. I cannot wait to be able to see what he gets up to because Robin Fern, and I believe his name is Robert Fern, and I can't click on him right now or else I'm going to lose like all of the casual encounters, aka the casual encounters that we do whenever we load in and, or excuse me, <clears throat> whenever we, we step in and first look at our different clans, and I need to roll the random generators for those in just a second. But, um... Yeah, I'm kind of having a little bit of, of whiplash because I didn't realize that Robin Fern's back got broken by that monster that roared past. And I didn't realize that he already kind of has eyes for Chestnut Star because she saved his life. And I think that she she completely is oblivious to the fact that he is really kind of enchanted, enamored, or maybe just deeply respects our Squirrel Clan leader because she has not only been so busy with her precious new Pebble Kit, even though Pebble Kit does seem to be extremely dubious and very angry about their life situation and really trying to like kind of be distrustful and a little bit jealous of all these cats who got to grow up and they get to live in this clan and they had it easy and Pebble get, had to struggle out there in the wilds. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we 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 were having a good time with Pebble Kit. It's such a good time that unfortunately Chestnut Star got white cough. I, I can only imagine that she was going back and forth, like decorating the nursery and spending too much time out hunting, or maybe she just, I just think that she, she got herself so overexcited that she didn't realize how hard she was pushing herself. And now, unfortunately, our clan leader is sick. And that's a little bit of trouble because unlike Salt Clan, we don't exactly have a firmly established deputy that everyone happens to be really confident in because no offense <laughs> I feel so bad for him but yeah the, the current deputy of Squirrel Clan he's really struggling fighting against the fact that uh, Moontuft wants to take Pouncebush's place 
he wants to go ahead and he wants to become the deputy. Yes, Moontuft may be a disgraced deputy from a clan that he refuses to speak about, but he feels that his experience is simply more valuable to Squirrel Clan and its future than Poundsbush's timid nature and fearfulness of getting sick ever could really contribute. And so today, my friends, we might have a contest between the two deputies. And that might have a big effect on how all of the cats of the clan think of them and who might actually be standing next to Chestnut Star's side as she gets ready to go ahead and continue to lead the clan. So before we get into all of that in the contest of deputies, let's go ahead and have a few catual encounters because we do have some cats who are actually hanging out, including a few who I kind of didn't expect, like Viard, Viard. Come on, are you finally, finally trying to go ahead and make some friends? Because that would be amazing. Via Heart, ooh, or actually, hold up here. Via Heart has been around since almost the very beginning. And I don't know if Via Heart really trusts Moontuft. I don't really know if she trusts Pouncebush either. However, she is currently talking with Pouncebush. He's a little hard to see, but he's right there behind her, behind her beautiful tail. You see, there he is, that, that, that's his ear, right there. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> So Via Heart and Pouncebush happen to be talking in one part of the warrior cat's den, and in another part, I can only imagine that somewhat loudly, Robin Fern seems to be talking to Moontuft, and possibly, I just feel like Robin Fern is super friendly and super kind, and he's quite the wise cat, so I think he can kind of glance over the clan and get an idea of the cats that it seems rather important to talk to, and Moontuft he does seem like he's trying to to sort of have a strong influence on the clan. So I could see how Robin Fern might go over and just start making conversation, mostly just to try to figure out what's going on here, you know? And then if you look up in the medicine cat den, it's so freaking precious, but we have Primrose Paw, who is currently in the Med Cat Den helping out Tangle Spring. And so that's the other, the third encounter we're going to be having today. So let's start with Via Heart, and then we'll move on to Moontuft, and then Primrose. So Via Heart and Poundsbush, they're having a conversation. They aren't really like best friends, and I feel like Via Heart, <laughs> with their strict personality, it tends to have a lot to say that's kind of judgy towards the other cats in the clan. So let's go ahead and we're going to randomize a minor event for their casual encounter, and we're gonna make it a complicated one because I feel like they're having a, Via Heart has a lot of opinions and she has never been afraid to express them. So how did it work? So, oh, gained one romance? You know what, one romance out of a hundred, I could totally swing that on both sides because Via Heart does have an absolutely stunning, like beautiful tail and quite the mysterious aura. So I, I'd work with that. Lost three dislike and gained three respect. Ooh, so that's really going in the right direction. Four comfort gained, five jealousy gained, and five trust gained. <laughs> All right, I like that. It's nice and complicated. But on the most part, it looks like Via Heart is actually supporting Pouncebush and kind of just letting Pouncebush know her concerns. So that's pretty exciting. I, I'm, I'm happy to see that finally Via Heart seems to be reaching out to at least some of the members of this clan because otherwise she has been very, very, very reserved or extremely judgy. Meanwhile, we have Robin Fern going ahead and, you know what, I just, I can't help but feel that he's extremely gregarious and kind of loud. And he just really loves talking to all of the cats and like kind of learning their story. And maybe that's why he has, uh, he's recognized as being quite wise since that is his trait. And I actually think, oh, of course, he has a broken back, right? And I think that that means that he's probably not ever really going to be able to become a warrior again. I I just can't see that happening, all considering, right? So with that kind of fate now in his paws, I actually, I actually am pretty impressed because even though we just met him, I can't help but feel that Robin Fur really has a sense of deep resilience about him. And yes, he's probably in a lot of pain every day from a broken back and the wounds of having survived being hit by a monster. But I don't think he lets that get him down in the way of, 
I mean, probably he gets down. I mean, anybody who's ever like, oh, I live with, like, my character lives with chronic pain and they never feel sad about it because they're going to be cheerful. Kind of needs a little flick on the head. <laughs> Because I grew up with like two parents who were both disabled due to different accidents in their lives and it sucks to live with chronic pain. It just sucks. But that doesn't mean that you have to let it consume your life and especially with my father, I've been really proud and, and honored to be able to watch him not rise above it because no, it, it, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with him. but he makes a conscious choice to put in the extra effort it takes to work through that pain so that he can try to be cheerful and kind and helpful to others. And that's kind of the same vibe that I'm getting from Robin Fur. So even though he does have quite a bit of pain, I think he would make an effort to push through it so that he could try to go ahead and get to know the other cats. And as a result, I think that he would actually make a good mediator, especially with his wisdom. So, let's go ahead and see what kind of relationship he might be establishing with none other than Moontuft by having another complicated event, because they don't really, they're kind of neutral to each other otherwise. So we could gain two romance. I'm going to think about that. I might roll to see if uh, either of those cats are interested. Mm, I don't know, maybe Moontuft? Okay, I'm going to roll my dice within a dice. If the number is one or two, uh, then I'll say that that cat will gain the romance, and if the number is uh, three and higher, then no romance right now, because I don't really think they have indicated any interest. Uh, let me roll. Oh! <laughs> Alright, well, you know, we rolled a one and a two, so I guess that, that that's one interest on Robin Fur's part and two interest on Moon Tufts, and to be, I'm just going to say this like out loud so that you guys all know. As far as I'm concerned, the majority of our cats probably go for both genders, and that's going to be the default. And then if I'm just really pulled with a character to say that they go one or the other, I'll say so. Uh, but okay, they both gain two romance. <laughs> All right, that's fine. However, they don't like each other. And also two dislike, five respect gained, four comfort gained, three jealousy gained, and two trust gained. So that's an extremely complicated, very complicated conversation. So dislike, no like, respect though, and comfort. So, and jealousy and trust. So I think they kind of like sized each other up and they realized that each of them kind of knows what they're doing. Like they are experienced cats. They they are from established clans. They have trained, they've got a good background. Uh, so you could respect that and you could actually feel comforted because every cat who has a little bit more experience contributes to the clan and makes it a little bit stronger. I could see how there's some jealousy kind of tugging between the two because I think Moontuft would be a bit jealous of that friendly open nature and and a new cat appearing who doesn't carry the burden of whatever disgrace is following Moontuft around. And I could see how the trust gained is just a teensy bit, mostly because, you know, right now we're in the same clan. So that means we have to have each other's back, right? But I could see how their personality is kind of great against each other a little bit. But they at least they have an awareness of one another is what we'll say for the romance, just knowing that they're there. <laughs> So not a strong indicator of a positive direction of friendship, like with Via Heart and Pouncebush, but something's going on there. And then finally, we have the relationship between Primrose Paw and Tanglespring, who I think very much like each other. So I think this is probably going to be a positive relationship action, especially because Tanglespring is in the Medicine Cat Den with Primrose Paw right now. Um. Should I roll for the casual one though? Maybe? Let's see what they're both doing. Now I can start clicking on cats because like we've worked with all of the current encounters. So Tangle Spring is hoping that Chestnut Star notices their improvement. Huh. I wonder why Tangle Spring wants Chestnut Star. Huh. Tangle Spring. But she was working with Primrose Paw, right? Hmm. Maybe she wants. Maybe she wants uh, Chestnut Star to notice how happy it seems uh, Primrose Paw is now that she is actually working in the Medicine Cat Den. And Primrose Paw is feeling kind of sassy today. So uh, let's go ahead and we're going to roll... Huh, so I, I feel like maybe 
Tangle Spring will mediate today between Primrose Paw and Chestnut Star because she's trying to show like, oh, it looks like the, the compassionate kind Primrose Paw, who's always taking care of her elders like a good cat should, um, like a good apprentice should. I feel like she wants to show Primrose Paw off to Chestnut Star, but because Primrose Paw is feeling a little bit sassy, maybe because she's so excited to be a medicine cat apprentice now and maybe feeling a little bit overly confident that like she has a new place of more importance in the clan, that it could be a complicated event. So we'll roll for that. So we could gain four romance, but since it is a paw, we will not do that. Uh, and then four platonic like gained three dislike. <laughs> Lost two respect, but gained two comfort, gained one jealousy, and gained one trust. All right, that's a little bit complicated, but I think on the whole, they feel comfortable with one another. Uh, but because Primrose Paw is feeling a little sassy and Tangle Spring is very vengeful, she has no patience for young apprentices who are trying to be upstarts. So probably wants to give her a little bwop on the nose. All right. So with all of that worked through, let's go ahead and see how our cats are today. And then we will start the competition of deputies because sure enough, Chestnut Star is actually quite sick. She's feeling extremely happy right now because she is so, so happy that she's able to go ahead and have a, a kit of her own to look after. Uh, but now, considering the fact that she has white cough and she is infectious, she is keeping away from that kit at the moment. And I think that would actually be very hard for her. And she would want to go ahead and maybe make sure that somebody is watching out over her little kit. So we'll have to see if maybe there is a cat, since she's now a both a leader and also a parent, she can mediate between her kit and another cat of the clan today. So she could choose to do that and put support behind her kit. Or as a leader, we could use her mediating powers that I have started using for leaders, even though it's making my apprentice list chaotic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we could uh, have her use her leader powers to go ahead and improve the bonds between the older clan mates and the warriors of the clan. And so here we see the conflict where if we do have a leader who has kits, especially a leader who is the only one raising the kits, like Chestnut Star, because she has no mate and little little pebble kit has no other parent then we run into that conflict of do we choose to support our kittens and try to improve their standing in the clan or do we choose to try to support our current warriors and really make sure that the bond between them is strong enough to face whatever disputes they might have to face in the future so mm, that is kind of a like a parent versus like clan leader tension there that chestnut star will have to decide about uh, so let's see what everybody else is doing. Pounce Bush thinks he's going crazy. I really feel like he is feeling extremely fatigued and also quite worried that like now that Chestnut Star is sick and Moontuft is so clearly kind of jockeying for his position as deputy. Yeah, I could see how he's getting kind of tense. Meanwhile, Flood Fern is making new nest. Sounds like he's trying very hard just to keep the medicine cat den quite tidy. Uh, right now we have, oh, that's right, Robin Fern is in here. We might let Flood Fern go ahead and mediate between Chestnut Star and Robin Fern just to say that like he overhears that they're having a lot of conversations with one another because they're both in the den. And actually it makes sense that maybe if the medicine cat has two cats who are in the den, they would probably always mediate between those two cats because, I mean, obviously the cats are like right here, right now in the den. So it makes sense that we'd have to use their mediating power for that moon on the cats in their den. Um, and we have a bit of medicine right now. So the herb stores are small, but enough for now. Robin Fern with his broken back, Chestnut Star with her white cough. She is infectious and Autumn Fur is still grieving but she's feeling content today. She still can't work in the condition of grief that she has been under, but she's feeling a little bit more content and at peace. And I wonder if that's perhaps she sensed the thing that we are going to be doing at the, uh, at the end of Leaf Bear, where all of you might have a chance to give Pepper Kit something special. But we'll talk more about that later. 
Uh, and also time fun, still grieving. He wants to get to know Chestnut Star better. So I'm going, like, that's his daughter. So I'm going to say that he's worried about, you know, his daughter slash his clan leader and wants to make sure that she's okay uh, since she's now in the Medicine Cat Den with White Cough because that's pretty serious. All right, let's check on everybody else real quick. So Primrose Paw, like we saw, feeling sassy. Tangle Spring, like we saw, hoping at Chestnut Star notices Primrose Paw's improvement. So we'll go ahead and mediate between that. Since it's a paw, no romance. And we're going to say that Tangle Spring is going to try to speak up for the compassionate, lovely Primrose Paw, who is always so kind to her. So no like, but a lot of respect and trust uh, from Tangle Spring speaking highly of Primrose Paw and her new apprentice position in the Medicine Cat Den. Good job, Tangle Spring. Autumn Fur, feeling content. She could mediate for her daughter, but she can't right now because she's mourning. Time Fawn, can't, he could mediate for their daughter actually because he is one of the parents. So he wants to get to know Chestnut Star better. So let's actually have him, we're gonna switch him to mediator just for a second. Since he's a parent, he can mediate just for the sake of his kit. So we're going to grab Plum Kit and let's actually mediate with Chestnut Star. Oh, they really like each other a lot. <laughs> Because Plum Kit is also his daughter and completely not related, but no one's telling, you know, Plum Kit that to Chestnut Star. Uh, so, you know, I, I could see how he would want to really make sure that they have a good, a good relationship. And he's going to build up that trust and comfort, respect, the fact that they like each other. Probably taking Plum Kit within a safe distance to go ahead and say hello to her, what she thinks is half-sister. All right, good job. Time fun. Let me go ahead and switch you back to warrior. And then we have, oh, Bloom Coral wants to go on patrol. Okay. So he's feeling like going on patrol. Moon Tuft regrets not eating the bird on the fresh kill pile earlier. <laughs> so he is our very smart and strange deputy with average experience. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how the competition between him and uh, him and Pouncebush is going to go in a minute here. Honeywing. Meanwhile, she's feeling gloomy. I wonder if I wonder if she feels like she's a little bit further away from her daughter than she used to be. That's probably it, actually. I think that she would be struggling because Primrose Pa is her best friend and and she just always felt so close to her daughter. She platonically loves her and relies on her so much. So Primrose Pa not wanting to be a warrior and perhaps follow in Honeywing's footsteps so they could go out hunting together all the time. I could see how that would be kind of hard for her to to kind of change gears on on her mental image of what it was going to be like uh, when Primrose Paw grew up and they got to explore the forest together. Huh! And then Robin Fern is gossiping. Oh, and that's right! So we are going to make it so that his role can actually go ahead and be mediator because I don't, I don't think he's ever going to be a warrior again and that's so funny actually because we were just talking about making him a mediator and here he is actually going ahead and gossiping with some of the other cats of the clan that's so perfect all right so who should he be gossiping with i feel like he would definitely be gossiping with chestnut star oh oh no he can't work this moon be oh no will he never be able to work because of his broken back oh my gosh all right, I might have to check settings for, for that because I, I want him to be able to, to feel like he's fulfilled in his life. I'm coming back for you, Robin Fern. And then, yeah, Time Fawn wants to know Chestnut Star better, Bloom Coral Patrol, Honeywing Gloomy, Via Heart. Via Heart's also gossiping. <laughs> All right, I would say that she is definitely gossiping maybe with, uh, maybe with Robin Fern. That, that would make sense because they're both gossiping. Pran's Tale feels a sense of dread. Oh, okay. I'm keeping more and more of an eye on Prance Tail because I'm beginning to become worried that if she doesn't develop a stronger relationship to stay in the clan, with how angry and furious Autumn Fur has been towards her and how weird it has been since Pepperkit died, I actually feel like there might be a low special event chance that Prance Tail might run away every day that she isn't. Uh, she isn't like every moon that she isn't close to somebody in this clan. So, huh, we might really want to at least try to get her like up to platonic love or romantic or something with somebody in here. She's kind of close to Flood Tuft. I wonder if she might end up taking like, I mean, Flood Tuft is really feeling close to Eddie Leaf. We're going to have to see. Oh, and speaking of Flood Tuft, hey, he was the next cat picking burrs from his pelt. 
Eddie Leaf, helping to escort the medicine cat to gather herbs. Aw, she must be worried about Chestnut Star and maybe even Robin Fern. Plum Kit is pestering the older cats to play with them. And then Pebble Kit is craving the taste of rabbit. All right, so that's what the clan is up to today. And today we are going to go ahead and we are going to have a special event happen because we are going to have a competition between Pounce Bush, who is our responsible good hunter and current deputy, 51 moons old, and Moon Tuft, who is 71 moons old, strange, smart, and also of average experience, and he is a former deputy. I think he is hiding the disgrace aspect of it quite severely from everyone else, but he does have that very odd history of having had uh, some cat bite him so bad that he was sick for three months from the bite wound. So here's what's going to happen. As Chestnut Star rests inside of the medicine cat den, oh yes, and Flood Fern, psst, psst, Flood Fern, come here real quick. We're gonna, we're gonna make you a mediator just for a second. He's gonna overhear what's going on between Robin Fern and Chestnut Star. And since Robin Fern has a crush, he's gonna go ahead and absolutely just have it be romantic. Here we go. Oh, Robin Fern really likes her. That's so cute. <laughs> oh my goodness. And she feels really comfortable around him. Okay, that's precious. All right, all right, psst, psst, psst. Flood Fern. All right, go back to being a medicine cat. Nothing ever happened. Also, you still have your apprentice, for crying out loud. Where's the primrose pocket over here? All right, medicine cat and apprentice. Oh my goodness. Like, don't worry about this. It's just a mess, but we're gonna make it work. It's, we're, don't worry about the apprentice nonsense. Uh, Tangle Spring already mediated. Chestnut Star can't because she's sick. Pounce Bush can actually, because he is deputy. So let me go ahead and have him be mediator really quickly. I'm gonna say that he actually got caught between the two gossiping cats, Robin Fern and Via Heart, because Via Heart was talking to him earlier. And we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna roll the dice. Romantic? Oh my. All right, well, one of the cats rolled for romantic. Again, Robin Fern, I think he's he's easy to fall in love with a lot. Oh dear. And look at that. So I think we already have a little bit of drama, but I think Via Heart's beautiful appearance just really distracts a lot of the cats. And there's just some some aura around her that tends to distract a lot of the cats. All right, let's see, who are looking for romance at least. So now that Chestnut Star is inside the medicine cat den, gossiping with Robin Fern, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to say that unofficially, Pounce Bush and Moon Tuft have kind of taken two sides of the camp and they're going to try to impress all of the other cats of the clan with what they can do today and gain more respect for the various uh, members of the clan from them by having the better patrol. So neither of them really seem to strongly like have a patrol preference and neither of them wanted to go on a patrol with anybody in particular. Bloom Coral just wants to go out on patrol um, and then Eddie Leaf is going to go on a medicine cat patrol. So we might get that done first. We'll go ahead and we will have, where am I? Ahem. Where, where, what, where? Flood friend, like, are you, are you, are you feeling unwell? What's going on? Why could you not, hello? Can you, can you not patrol? Hello? Flood friend? What? Where are my medicine cats? <laughs> Hold up here. Where are my medicine cats? Why are they? Did I mess everything up by doing that? I don't think I did. Hello? Huh. Well, uh, any leave? Can you, can you, okay. Well, fine, fine, be that way. <laughs> so anyway, here's what we're going to do. We are going to have Pounce Bush go ahead and bring the cats that he's closest to uh, on a patrol with him, two of them. And we're going to let Moontuft bring the cats that he has become closest to on a patrol, uh, two of them. And then the cats of the clan are going to gain a chunk of respect for whoever has the better patrol. Let me roll a d20 to see how much respect. 18, that's a lot. So while we have our leader, resting in the medicine cat den. Unbeknownst to her, there's quite a bit of uh, tension in the air. And Pouncebush and Moontuft are going to have a unofficial competition to try to gain a huge chunk of respect so that they can secure their position as deputy. So Pouncebush, let's go ahead and double check who he is closest to real quick. He's gonna bring, he can bring two cats with him. So he's real, okay, time fawn, probably. 
and it looks like Flood Tuft. So Time Fawn and Flood Tuft will be going with Pounce Bush, and we're going to have. Hey, oh man, oh heck! All right, I know that I've got. Nobody panic! I know that I've got Moon Tuft not liked. He should have a relationship status with Pounce Bush that's really low. And Moon Tuft is closest to not a lot of cats, but via heart. And then it looks like he is closest to, and you know, Chestnut Star obviously can't go. Looks like he's closest to Flood Tuft, but Eddie Leaf is the next second cat he's closest to. So Via Heart and Eddie Leaf will be going with Moon Tuft, and Flood Fur, or, ne or excuse me, and Time Fawn and Flood Tuft will be going with Pounce Bush. All right, which leaves some of the other cats to the side. So that leaves Prance Tail, so she won't be going, and Bloom Coral actually. Oh ha! <laughs> Oh my gosh, and actually Honeywing! Okay, that's hilarious. So yeah, Prance Tail, Honeywing, Bloom Coral. We've been having a lot of like romantic thoughts. Like Bloom Coral's been caught between trying to chase his crush to Honeywing or his chase to Prance Tail, or, or his crush to Prance Tail. I'm gonna roll a dice to see which cat he's gonna go on patrol with. <gasps> it's gonna be Prance Tail! Oh, no wonder Honeywing's feeling kind of gloomy. Like she might, she might end up just like going on patrol by herself. Oh my gosh. All right, and we're going to send these two out, maybe for training? Yeah, maybe for training, because it sounds like there's going to be some sort of other patrol going on here soon. Oh, wait, what's this? Oh, wait. Oh my gosh, what's going on? Trailing behind the patrol, there's a mighty crash above, above Bloom Coral. They look around wildly, just as the world is blotted out by a tangle of heavily falling branches. Um, I don't think there's any option but to proceed. This is terrible. Okay, this might, oh no, this might really, oh dear. Your, their clanmates come running at their yells and Bloom Coral is still freed. Shaken, but unharmed. The patrol settles down as everyone comforts each other. What? Okay, that's way too, like, what the heck? Are you kidding me? All right, come on. Like, that was definitely not a minor event. That was, I feel like that was a major event because that could have killed Bloom Coral. Whoops, I already clicked on it. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, um, because Prance Tail actually helped Bloom Coral get out, so it was a good reaction, we're gonna go ahead and say that these two actually just gained nine romantic-like, nine respect, three trust, and any dislike or jealousy they had probably just got blasted out of here. So no wonder poor Honeywish is feeling gloomy. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that was so close. Bloom Coral, you can't die like that. That would be just tragic. Oh my gosh. All right. I feel like that leaves poor Honeywing. Like, she's going to end up going on patrol by herself, right? Wait, wait a second. One, two. Oh, man. Did I send the wrong cat out? Because we have Flood Tuft. Oh, that's right. Because Time Fawn actually can't go out on patrol because he's still grieving too, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and have the competition between our two deputies now. Pounce Bush is going to go ahead and take Flood Tuft, and we'll bring Eddie Leaf then. I think. Yeah, I think. I think we'll go ahead and bring. Uh, well, yeah. You know what? Because Eddie Leaf is closer to to Flood Tuft, so this will be group number one. And they're going to go out on a random patrol, and we're going to see if Pounce Bush is able to win the respect of the majority of his clan, like all of his clan. Whoever, whichever cat has the best outcome gains the 18 respect from every other cat in the clan. Let's see what happens. Your patrol comes across a vole nibbling at a seed. Hmm. I don't know if a single vole is going to be enough. Eddie Leaf drops into a crouch and has to consciously stop their tail from swaying in excitement as they stalk the prey. Once they think they're close enough, they give their haunches a little wiggle and leap. The catch, they catch the vole squarely between their paws and kill it. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was going to be so much more dramatic after all of that build up. What the heck? Well, okay. So we brought back a vole with Pouncebush's patrol. And now let's see what happens when we send out Moon Tuft. Uh, what? The patrol approaches a two-leg nest in the woods while hunting. Okay. The patrol has a successful hunt, 
avoiding any two legs. Huh. 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 I don't know if that really settled. I don't know if that really settled, like, the competition between the two of them. But I think on the end, I think all of the cats would say that it seems like the braver thing might have been done by Moontuft. And he used whatever mysterious skills it seems he was hiding of knowing how to wiggle around two leg nest to go ahead and bring back the bigger catch of prey. So, this is a win for Moontuft. And we'll have to see how that plays out as we go ahead and get ready for the next moon and see if Chestnut Star might feel perhaps there should be a new deputy by her side. Hmm. So, all right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. If you could, do please leave a like for our squirrely little clan. And if you'd like to join us on this and literally thousands more adventures, do please consider subscribing. But most importantly, stay curious, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye!